Today, we're looking up. Literally. Ever noticed how so many rooftops, especially in older towns or warmer climates, have this wavy, rippling pattern? It's almost artistic. But as with most things that stick around for centuries, there's more going on than just looks. So today we're diving into a surprisingly layered story. Why do roof tiles have that wavy shape? From ancient architecture to rainwater logic, this humble curve is anything but accidental. So let's get into it, right here on History of Simple Things. Let's rewind, way back. The earliest wavy roof tiles, often called pan tiles or S tiles, date all the way back to ancient Greece and Rome. These civilizations were already experimenting with clay roof systems and they stumbled onto something rather brilliant. See, they realized that if you curved a tile into a half pipe shape, it could do two things really well, interlock and guide rain. Roman builders used what's known as the imbrex and tegula system. The flat tegula tiles were placed side by side and curved imbrex tiles were laid over the joints, kind of like little clay gutters. This setup allowed rainwater to flow cleanly down the roof without seeping in. It also helped with airflow under the tiles, reducing heat buildup. Over time, the design evolved into a single tile with a built-in curve, and that's where the recognizable wavy shape started to take hold. Simple, effective, and very Roman. The wavy shape is more than just decorative. It's a miniature engineering system. Picture a flat roof tile during a heavy downpour. Water pools then slowly runs off. But now imagine that same tile with a wave pattern. The ridges and valleys guide water efficiently downward, almost like a built-in series of little channels. This is critical in rainy or storm-prone areas. The curved profile prevents water from sitting or seeping between tiles. The waves direct it quickly and safely toward the gutters or eaves. Plus, these waves act like a mechanical overlap. One curve naturally fits over the next locking together in a way that helps seal the surface from both water and wind. It's like giving your house a raincoat with built-in gutters. And in snowy places, the wave shape actually helps prevent snow from piling too heavily in one spot. The curved ridges make it more likely for snow to slide off in chunks instead of lingering and weighing down the roof. Now, let's talk air. One of the less obvious benefits of those curves is how they create little air channels beneath and between the tiles. That space helps roofs breathe. Air can flow under the tiles, carrying away heat from direct sunlight and preventing the buildup of moisture that could lead to mold or rot. This is especially helpful in hot climates. Think Mediterranean rooftops in Italy or Spain, that wavy terracotta isn't just for show. The shape and the spacing between tiles help keep buildings cool by ventilating the roof deck. In a time before air conditioning, that passive airflow made a big difference. It also keeps the tiles themselves from overheating and cracking. Clay, after all, is fired in a kiln and can get brittle under prolonged heat. Allowing heat to disperse gently from beneath helps extend the life of the roof without any moving parts or electricity involved. It's passive architecture at its finest. Waves aren't just great for water, they're strong. Engineers know that curves distribute stress more evenly than flat surfaces. This is why arches are used in bridges, domes in cathedrals, and yes, waves in roof tiles. The undulating shape gives the tiles added rigidity and resistance to cracking under weight or impact. Let's say someone walks on a roof during maintenance, or there's a heavy hailstorm. 
A flat tile might snap more easily under pressure, while a curved tile flexes and redistributes the force. That makes it less likely to break, and if it does, the interlocking design usually prevents the damage from spreading quickly. The wavy design also helps during installation. When roofers place tile after tile, the natural wave makes it easier to align them consistently, and the curve helps the rows bite into one another. That's part of why wavy tiles are such a standard in so many countries. They're easier to install correctly and stay in place even under rough weather conditions. Interestingly, this wave shape pops up all over the world in slightly different styles. In Spain and Latin America, the Mission Tile or Spanish Tile has that classic red curved look. In Japan, traditional Kawara roof tiles also have graceful curves, often adorned with ornate end caps. Even in Scandinavia, curved clay tiles have been adapted for colder climates. These regional versions may vary in size, thickness, and color, but the core concept remains. Curved tiles manage rain, resist wind, and offer thermal benefits. It's fascinating to think that people continents apart, without the internet or international design conferences, all arrived at roughly the same solution. Nature inspired it. Humans refined it. And while modern roofing now includes everything from asphalt shingles to metal sheets, that ancient wavy tile still has its place. It's durable, efficient, and it just looks good. That aesthetic alone is part of why it continues to be favored in upscale homes and historic renovations. So next time you look up at a rooftop and see those graceful waves, know that you're looking at more than a pretty pattern. You're seeing ancient engineering in action, designed to fight rain, wind, sun, and time itself. Those curves are about function first and beauty second, even if they manage both effortlessly. From ancient Roman aqueduct logic to modern day solar tile upgrades, the wavy roof tile stands as a reminder that sometimes the smartest solutions are the simplest. A curve in the right place can mean the difference between a soggy ceiling and a dry home. Pretty incredible, right? Thank you for watching. If you have suggestions for our next video, feel free to share them in the comments below. We'll be sure to give you an acknowledgement for your contribution. Thank you for joining us on this journey through the history of simple things. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and stay tuned for more stories woven through the smallest details.